Welcome to the GBC Podcast. We are continuing our series on the names of God. Now, we've we've covered a number of these already, and we're going to cover two or three more in the next few weeks as we wrap up. But as we think about God's names, it, it's so much like a beautiful diamond where there are so many facets, but all of them are describing God. It, it's hard to, to stop and remember that all of these are God. All of these tell us different aspects of who He is. And so today, Larry's joining me as we look at El Shaddai. Now, for most of us who who uh, were listening to Christian music in the '80s, uh, you, as soon as you say that, all of a sudden you you hear a voice in your in your head singing that along with you. But uh, as we're looking at El Shaddai, the the translation here is that it is God Almighty. He is the sufficient one. He is the source. He is the one that is there for us. And it goes back to a literal translation of the God of the mountains. It's such an interesting way to think about it as a source. We see it 48 times uh, in the Old Testament, and and Larry's going to talk about where many of those come from shortly. But it is a compound name used often uh, where you have El, uh, or shortened of Elohim, which we've talked about before, God our Creator, and then that along with Shaddai, our our source, our sufficient one. Uh, But in fact, this one was used as God's main covenant name until he told us his name of Yahweh. So when we look at from Abraham up through uh, Moses, this is the name, this is God's big name, the the big one that was used. And the big picture here is that he is all sufficient and he is the one and source of all our blessings. So do you also hear that song go through your head every time that we say that name? I do. I think I I, I was listening to Amy Grant sing that uh, (laughs) Uh, so many times uh, when it first came out, and just a, it is a wonderful song. As a matter of fact, it gets in your head, and and you try to to sing it, and, uh, and you get Trump tr- uh, stumbling over all the, the Hebrew in it. The, yeah, the, <laughs> the first the first verse is okay because uh, you can uh, you can get the El Shaddai part of it, uh, but uh, the farther you go along in it, uh, you start losing. It's, it's it was funny funny to me. Just a little uh, caveat, you know, listening to people. Uh, I kind of grew up in my early Christian life trying to sing, and uh, the older you get, you lose your voice. But listening to people, that was a song that everybody tried to sing. And and listening to them murder the Jewish language <laughs> when they sang it was, uh, it was just, it, you were just kind of waiting. You were just kind of waiting for what, they, what were they going to say, and uh yeah, so it was, uh, yeah. It, it Whether they were a skilled years. singer or not, this tested a whole different thing. It sure did. Yeah, <laughs> when you look at when you look at that, and you look at, uh, I thought one of the things I thought about, you, and you mentioned it. Uh, one of the uh, translations is uh, "God of the Mountain," and many times when we think about uh, the God of the Mountain, uh, one of the things, especially in, in the, the Hebrew culture, they were always uh, they. Not that God needed defending, but they were always defending uh, our God, the God, the the big G God, the only God against false gods mm-hmm. from all the other cultures. And and one of the the, the thinking was that uh, uh, they were always putting significance in in the mountains because that's where most of the 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 uh, other cultures thought that their God, their gods, many gods lived or in the mountains. So and we see that in Judges where they keep going to the yeah, high places. Yeah, so they went to the high places and it was very significant. So I think this, even some of the other uh, interpretations uh, use the term uh, God of Thunder. That this uh, El, El Shaddai was translating uh, God of Thunder. And that thunder translates back to the, the idea of false gods because uh, through... Uh, if you look at most of the false gods that uh, the other cultures uh, followed, they had a lot of them had uh, weather-related uh, names, and so this god of thunder was the and the 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 term overpower was used also. So it's the the overpowering god of thunder who overpowered all the other so-called gods of the the other countries. And so it was It's kind of interesting when you kind of put all that together and think about that. A little yeah, bit. especially when we first see it coming with Abraham and Abraham being called out of a culture of multiple gods. In uh, Genesis 17, we, we see 
Now then Abram was 99 years old, and the Lord had appeared to Abram and said, I am God Almighty, El Shaddai. Walk before me and be blameless, and I will establish my covenant between me and you, and I will multiply you exceedingly. So this is the case where we see his name shift. And this is really 25 years after God had said, I will make you a great nation. And so 25 more years have passed, and he's 99 years old. He's been called out of a pagan world, out of of his ancestors worshiping all these false gods. And now God is telling him, I am the God Almighty. I am the one beyond all of those. Right. You know, I think it's, as uh, you've already alluded to, uh, it's uh, El Shaddai or God Almighty is is used uh, forty eight times in the Scripture, and it's it's just really ironic that uh, thirty one of those forty eight times it's uh, used in the Book of Job, and so uh, you know I, as as I thought about that, but how more appropriate could it be when you look at when you look at Job and you look at the 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 life of Job and you know. Job, Job, uh, he uh, he didn't reject God, but Job challenged God, and Job, Job accused God, mm. and Job, Job asked a question uh, several times. He asked the why question. In other words, we all know the book of Job and what happened to Job, and and the fact of losing everything basically he, that he had, including his health. But we, when we look at that, and we, and we and so Job was. You know, is a is a natural instinct to ask the questions why, but then God just you know through this El Shaddai God Almighty, He reinforced to Job. He he never is ironic. He never did answer the question why. He never just that answered, I am that God. Right. I'm the Almighty. He one. said, but he but he confirmed his majesty and his sovereignty to Job uh, through those questions, and he confirmed who he was. And what it ended up being, giving Job a, a much deeper uh, understanding of his relationship with God and who God mm-hmm. was, even to point. And I, I wrote a scripture down out of Job uh, 42, verses 5 through 6. And listen to what Job says. Because he's dealing with El Shaddai, because he's dealing with God Almighty, uh, he says, I have heard of you by the hearing of the ear. Mm. And uh, I just finished doing a study for Wednesday night out of Philippians where Paul talks about it's not, uh, it's not about uh, uh, knowing God. It's about having a real knowledge. It's not about a head knowledge of God, but a heart knowledge of God. And I think it's, uh, it, that's exactly what uh, Job is saying. He says, I've heard of you by the hearing of the ear. I've, I, I, I have a hear, head knowledge. Yeah, I have a head knowledge here. But then he goes on to say, but now... My eyes see you, and you know that's that. It really is kind of that that idea of the 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 veil has kind of been ripped away, and now uh, I've heard of you, but now I really see who you are. And he says, yeah, he goes on to say, but now I see you, but therefore I retract. In, the, mm. in other words, I I take back what I've been saying. And he says, and I repent in dust and ashes. Mm. And so Paul, uh, when we see not only what Paul said about knowledge, but now we see what Job is talking about. He says, he said, I had a, I heard about you, I had a, a head knowledge, but now I've got a heart knowledge. And because I have a heart knowledge, I see who you are. I see El Shaddai. I see God Almighty. And I tremble at what I see, and I repent in dust and ashes and uh, and just the reality of the sovereignty and majesty of who Christ is. And and Job being someone who went through so many things and in the face of that coming to the point of saying I I I rest in that. I trust in that. I find my my source in that. Even though all these things have been removed, I'm going to find contentment in that. And it's interesting that we see this name of God being so important early in Scripture, and Job was probably a contemporary or close to it of Abraham. He, we, we see it in the Bible later on, but the events, we think, probably happened in that early time period where that name of God was, was his main name before, before he had said, I am Yahweh. And what an amazing thing to see and to see that source in him. And... Uh, Looking at the going back to the the Hebrew, interesting if you 
if you look at the, the root of that word, it, it points toward nourishment. And that's often, we think of God as huge and powerful, and He is, but it's also our God is a nourishing God, supplying our needs and, and walking with us and, and whatever He's calling us to, just like He called Abraham to a new life and a new location and that He's going to have a new family. Abraham tried to do it his own way, but then God came in and said, no, here's my way. He provided, He, he nourished, He created this entire line through His sovereign work. Yeah, you know, the idea of, of the being uh, our nourishment that we need and uh, that's how we that's how we grow. That's how we stay healthy through uh, being nourished. And it's not just that idea of nourishing, but there's this that idea of all sufficient. Mm. You know, and that's uh, that's a uh, to realize that God is everything that we need. That's all we need. We need God. He's all sufficient, and He does everything in our lives for us. And He accomplishes everything in our life for us. And, you know, realizing when you can realize that God is sufficient, that's, you know, we, we just, for some reason we have a hard time with that. We do. You know, we just, we, because we're, we're self-sufficient and we put self, you know, <clears throat> we, we, if we look at self many times, self is always the thing that gets in our way. It's always the thing that's, it keeps us just a little bit separated from God. It's always a thing where we rely upon ourselves and we rely upon what what we're capable of doing. And we don't fully realize that we're not capable outside of Christ. We're not capable of doing anything. And we realize that we need God and, we're, and He is sufficient and we can rely upon Him to do everything we need in our lives. It, uh, it sure makes life a lot simpler uh, to rely upon God to do it in our lives. Right, when we realize that we just don't have all that it takes. And knowing that He's sufficient, no, not just for our needs, but He is all sufficient in that He needs nothing from us. He is the source. He is the provider. And so anything He sets us apart for, like He did Abraham, when He sets us apart for something, He's going to supply our needs. He's going to take care of that. And I, to me, we, we see a, an amazing connection when we get to John 15 in the New Testament where now Jesus is that source. He is the vine and we are the branches. And, and to bear fruit, we must abide in Him. We have to remain connected to our source. And so we see the echo of who God's character is right there in His Son and, and the God of the universe that we are now uh, abiding in Him. And, and that's the way we provide the fruit. It's not us. It's not our work. It's Him working through us and Him nurturing us and Him supplying in us and, and pouring out through us that we become blessings to others just as Abraham blessed the whole world through his line. Yeah, you know, God, we often say that uh, God never calls us to do anything that He doesn't equip us mm -hmm. to do. So in other words, He's not going to call us to do anything that He's not, he's not going to equip us to do. It's like that we, we often say, we use the, the, the term uh, many, many times that uh, God's not going to put anything on us that we can't handle, anything that we can't stand. We're not going to, He's not going to oppress us with anything that we can't handle, but that's not a true statement. Right. The statement is, really, is that He's not going to put anything in our lives or in us that we, through Him, can't handle, that strength. He can't handle in His strength. And, you know, the... This, the scripture says, that "Greater is He that is in me than He that is in the world." So that that all things are possible through Christ. So it's His power, it's His strength, nothing that we do. And and I think that's a perfect example of this El Shaddai, God Almighty. And I think that's the, uh, I think the Israelites, that's that that was what they held on to with this name. Mm -hmm. Of course, we talked about many many names, but the name El Shaddai. God Almighty, the sufficient one, the, the mighty one, the powerful one, the overcomer, the overpower, the thunder, the mountain, mm. you know, all of those all of those terms were to the just the power of God in How our lives. How great and amazing yeah. and mighty he is to set apart all those things. To wrap up, I want to look at Psalm 91. And this is, a, as with most of the Psalms, it captures in such a powerful way uh, who God is and and praising God and, and just describing Him. Psalm 91, I want to read a couple of verses and jump around a little bit. 
He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. And jumping down to verse 14, because he has loved me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him securely on high because he has known my name. To know that we are secure because of our God Most High, the one that dwells that becomes our shelter and the one that we get to be in the shadow of His wings and, and uh, again, connecting with Christ. No matter what we face, just as Job faced all those things and came out in the end knowing that God was the supplier, when we face all those things, to know that we have that same God that is on our side and that same God who supplies all of our needs. Thanks so much for being here for this week, and we will see you next week.